Hey everybody, Christian here and today I want to talk once more about my Trueness storage server. You maybe remember the video where I've built it for my home lab. I'm still using it to store all my important files in my home lab, such as YouTube videos, graphics, personal data and whatnot. But this thing has literally been a ticking time bomb because I made a pretty big mistake setting it up. Some of you already mentioned it in the comments, the way how I've configured the storage pool was somewhat concerning, result in bad performance or even cause data loss in a specific circumstance. So I took all this incredible feedback from you and ignored it <laughs> for like half a year or so. Lucky for me that nothing happened to any of the drives yet. But of course, I always wanted to change it and make the whole server setup more robust for the future. And thanks everybody for the honest feedback on that video that always shows me that I still have so much to learn and I have a very smart community. I really appreciate that. The whole story is I had a bit of experience with storage and NAS solutions. Yeah, I've set up a few smaller systems at work before. I knew about RAID and backups and ECC memory and all that stuff. But this project has shown me that it is a huge difference between installing small home NAS and a huge storage server. Anyway, today is the day I want to show you my new setup for this storage server and let's talk about what actually was my mistake so you can learn how to avoid it whenever you want to build something like this, a NAS or a storage server. This video is supported by Teleport, a free and open source access proxy that helps you to securely authenticate to all your IT infrastructure like Linux servers, databases, Kubernetes clusters, web applications or remote desktop. You can easily protect your accounts with modern security features such as two-factor authentication or a passwordless login and access your services through the browser or the CLI tool with audit logging and session recording. And the best, it's completely free in the community version so you can just download and run it in your entire home lab. Or if you'd like to use it in your company, Teleport offers many professional features like auditing, single sign-on and more. It's a great tool, so just check it out. You will find a link to their website in the description of this video. Before I start showing you what I've done, we first need to recap what my setup was like and we also need to talk about ZFS and storage pools. Again, I know, complicated stuff. But this literally is the most critical part about a storage server. And I feel that I neglected it a bit in my TrueNAS scale video because I was so excited about the other cool features like Kubernetes, Docker and Linux. However, this is still foremost a storage solution. And although Kubernetes is available on that machine, I honestly don't use it much. What I mainly bought this server for was storage and I've ordered it with 12 four terabyte drives, put it all in a single RAID Z1 storage pool, just like I've done it previously with my small virtual server. However, just like I said, you need to be careful doing it this way because there are two major problems with this setup, performance wise and in terms of fault tolerance. But let's break it down in a bit more detail. So when we're talking about ZFS performance, there are a couple of different metrics to take a look at the streaming read speed, the streaming write speed and the read and write IOPS. So the input and output operations per second. And there is, by the way, a great documentation on the TrueNAS homepage about measuring these metrics and how to calculate the performance of ZFS pools. And in the documentation, it's described as the following. IO operations on a RAID Z VDEV need to work within a full block. So each disk in the VDEV need to be synchronized and operating on the sectors that make up that block. No other operation can take place on that VDEV until all the disks have finished reading from or writing to those sectors. Thus IOPS on a RAID Z VDEV will be that of a single disk. While the number of IOPS is limited, both the streaming and write speed will scale with the number of data disk. Each disk has to be synchronized in its operations, but each disk is still reading and writing unique data and will thus add to the streaming speeds, minus the parity level and reading writing this data doesn't add anything new to the data stream. So if I understood everything correctly, <laughs> in my case, I added 12 4 terabyte drives to a single RAID Z1 storage. And let's assume a single drive would have 250 IOPS and 100 megabytes per second streaming read and write speed. In reality, it is a bit faster on these Western digital drives that I bought, but it doesn't really matter for this calculation. So let's start with the streaming speed. And according to this documentation and the theoretical numbers, the streaming and read and write speed should be 
1100 megabytes per second because we have 12 drives. Each has 100 megabytes per second streaming speed, but we need to subtract one drive because we are using a single parity layout. This gives us an impressive reading and writing speed, 1100 megabytes per second. This is awesome. But the IOPS are still just 250 because we have put all these disks into a single VDEV. And that means in reality, the overall performance of that entire pool isn't that great in every condition. You just wouldn't immediately notice it. Because if you are just transferring data over a network share, it's mostly reading and writing the data from the cache first. But as soon as you start any recovering processes, for instance, if one drive fails and you need to replace it, those recovering processes can take a pretty long time as the entire pool is just limited to the IOPS of a single drive. And this becomes more and more a problem the bigger your pool is and the more storage it consumes. That is why it's mostly recommended to not add too many drives to a single VDEV. This is by the way also mentioned in the official Oracle Solaris CFS documentation. RAID Z configurations with a single digit groupings of disks should perform better. The second and I think even the bigger problem is the fault tolerance with this setup. So as you probably know, a RAID Z1 is equivalent to a hardware RAID 5. So no matter how many drives you add to a single VDEV, only one drive can fail. If you're losing a second one, all your data is lost. And call me crazy, I haven't really considered failing two disks at the same time a realistic case. But many of you guys have warned me this is actually happening and it could become a problem, especially during a recovery process, which takes a pretty long time because I've decided to put all drives on single VDEV and limited the IOPS. And when during this recovery process, a second drive dies, which literally does happen sometimes, all my data, all my video files, my backup, everything is lost. <laughs> so that doesn't sound great. Of course, I wanted to change that. But what should I do about this? What is the best recommendation? So I came up with the following set. Setup. Instead of a single parity like in a RAID Z1, I took a RAID Z2 which adds double parity and that means I can now lose two drives per VDEV. And I also didn't put all the drives in a single VDEV, I split them up in two, which gives me a fault tolerance of four drives in the best possible case. So I still can't lose more than two drives in a single VDEV, but when I lose two drives in each VDEV, it's still okay. And this also doubles the IOPS, which gives me an overall better performance of this entire pool. The only downside is, you need to sacrifice the storage capacity of four drives, which is 33% of the entire storage capacity. So instead of 48 terabyte, I only got 32 terabyte left for data, but this is still okay. Just giving the fact that I now can sleep much better when anything goes wrong with any of the drives, even during a recovery process, a second drive fails in any pool, it's still okay for me. And that is also, by the way, the setup that most of you guys have recommended uh, to me in the comment section. So good job, everyone. You clearly were smarter than I was. <laughs> but that only was part one of my improvements. I also wanted to have an even faster storage pool, not primarily for storing big data, but for storing virtual disks or uh, run containers on the TrueNet system itself. And because magnetic hard drives aren't the best for this job, I added four brand new SSDs to this storage server and built a second pool with them. And for this pool, I've chosen a slightly different layout here because it solves a different task. Fault tolerance is not so relevant in this case. I can just back up this entire pool to the first one. So even when I lose the data on this pool, it's not so critical. But instead, performance, streaming speed and IOPS, they are more relevant. So what I came up with is a mirrored stripe. So I haven't really used RAID Z1 or RAID Z2 at all. I instead, I've just split up the four SSDs into two mirrored VDEVs. This gives me the IOPS of two SSDs by sacrificing 50% of their storage capacity and a fault tolerance of two drives in the best possible case, so one drive per VDEV. And I know a Stripe mirror is pretty expensive, yeah? Out of two terabyte storage capacity, I only get one terabyte, but I get better performance by still having a fair amount of redundancy and fault tolerance. So that's why I just also bought a pretty cheap brand of SSDs. Honestly, I don't know how good these drives are, but I suppose they still will perform better 
than usual HDD, so I can just use it for testing IX applications. The Kubernetes part on that TrueNAS scale server. It also should be fast enough for NFS shares because I'm using that in combination with a 10 gigabit network interface. So this is more like a testing storage pool. It's not holding any critical data. I will test that a bit in the next couple of months. And of course, I will let you know how that goes. When you think I've made a bad mistake again, just please put it in the comments below and let's just talk about it. And maybe one day I will make a comprehensive video about TrueNAS and storage server with all the stuff that I've learned from these projects, yeah, uh, some of the best practices like backup plans, storage layouts and so on. Please tell me if that would be interesting for you and what you'd like to see in such a video. And I think that's it for now, yeah. As always, thanks everybody for watching. Thank you so much for your feedback, by the way. And I will catch you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye bye.